Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Luke United Methodist Church this morning. Wendy, am I coming through on the speaker? Yes. Uh, welcome. Uh, let's begin uh, with the call to worship. So uh, come into worship and see what God has in store for us today. Come into God's presence and see the difference love makes. Come into the light and see the glory of God. Come and see. Come and see. Good morning, my name is uh, Chad Jennings, I'm the pastor here at St. Luke. This is for the those who are on live stream this morning, I know you all know who I am. But, um, <laughs> welcome to worship with us this morning. Uh, it is uh, January 17th, a uh, beautiful day outside, a great day for us to be in worship together. Just a couple of things to bring to your attention before we begin today. The first one is that today is Human Relations Sunday. And uh, normally, uh, if you were given, being given bulletins, you'd have an insert. And so here's the insert for today. They're in your pew, and they describe what Human Relations Sunday is about. But basically, the, the offering is designed to help uh, provide for uh, communities that are um, at risk or poorer, and to lift children, especially uh, at-risk teens is what they call them, to lift them out of poverty and to give them every opportunity uh, to, to thrive. And so that's uh, what, what Human Relations Day is about. It's put on the Sunday uh, just prior to Martin Luther King Jr. Day because we think that they coincide well together. If you would like to participate in that, there are offering envelopes in your pew uh, that say special Sundays on them. And those uh, offering envelopes will be used throughout the year for all of the special Sundays that we have. It's just a general special Sunday envelope. But you can uh, place an offering in there, put it in the plate on your way out, and we'll make sure that that goes to that special Sunday offering. Um, also, um, as long as the numbers stay down, and we hope that they, they do, uh, we will continue to worship in person every week at this 9.30 time slot. Um, we will be announcing that via our Facebook page and uh, via text message um, every week. Uh, you'll get a reminder that we're having it, or you'll get a, a text saying that we will not be having it. And um, right now, the numbers are really good. And so we're hoping it stays that way. They're actually trending down right now, thank God. Um, we do need uh, some people to help with... Uh, like ushering and greeting uh, during worship, and I think next week is a week that we need somebody. So if you would like to check those lists on your way out on the counter and sign up that way, or uh, Jennifer has an online forum uh, for you to sign up, a Google Doc that she sent out that you can sign up that way. But please, if you're going to be here, volunteer. Otherwise, know that when you come next week, I might ask you to do it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's... Uh, Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for today and for all of the, the things that you uh, bring to our attention, Lord, um, and especially for uh, those communities that need our help. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless us, bless this time of worship, um, fill this space with your presence, and let us know that you are here. May we be different when we leave today than when we came. In your name we pray. Um, let's start off uh, with uh, a little bit of singing, and so uh, turn in your hymnal to 454. Uh, we're going to do uh, one verse of that song, 454, and uh, please uh, keep your mask. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, the Cleveland Browns made history. Have a seat represent today. Absolutely. They made history by making it to the playoffs for the first time since 2002. Woohoo! Yeah. Wow. In, and in that uh, particular year, they lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card round. But a week ago, the Cleveland Browns made history by beating, well, maybe pummeling is a better word, <laughs> the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card round. And I find this interesting because in the week before the game was played, the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver, Juju Smith-Schuster, said that he was not worried about the Browns at all. <laughs> he called them the same nameless, gray-faced team we beat every year. I bet he knows their names now. <laughs> <laughs> now, Juju has uh, taken a lot of heat over that comment. And when you say something like that, you better be able to back it up, right? Now, he was asked if he regretted those words, and he says he doesn't. But he's going to have a full year to think about this. Now, as we enter the scripture this morning, I want you to pay attention to the way that same thing plays out in the story today. This scripture comes from John 1, verses 45 through 51. And you'll see the words, the actual words from scripture on the screen. But I'm going to tell the story in my own words. And so, listen for God to speak to you. So, Jesus spent yesterday calling his first disciples. He, he went to the river to be baptized, and, and following that, uh, a couple of John's disciples started following Jesus instead. One of those guys was Andrew, who's Peter's brother. And, and so, after Andrew wants to follow Jesus, he decides to go looking for Peter. And so now Jesus has three disciples, the two that he got from John, plus Peter. And he wants to go to Galilee. Now, at some point on his way to Galilee, he runs into Philip. And Philip is from the same town as Andrew and Peter. And so he asks Philip to join them. Hey, come on, Philip. And Philip knew that this other guy, Philip knows this other guy, that he thinks would also make a good disciple, and so he goes to find him. And he says, hey, Nathaniel, you, you know that guy that we've been looking for, the Messiah, you know, the one that, that Moses and the prophets wrote about? Hey, I found him. I found him. His name is Jesus, and he's from Nazareth. Wait, what? He's... He's from where? From Nazareth? You're kidding, right? Nothing good comes from Nazareth. <laughs> now, you're, you're right, but, but even so, this is the guy. I'm telling you, this is the guy. Come see for yourself and tell me that I'm wrong. And so they go. And as they get close to where Jesus was, Jesus says, Hey, friends, here comes a guy who is a true Israelite, you're going to find no deceit in him. And Nathaniel says, wait, how do you know that? You don't know me. But I do. Before Philip told you to come and check me out, you were sitting under a fig tree. But there's no way that you could know that. You must be God's son. All right, Philip, you were right. Um, he might be from Nazareth, but this is the guy. Well, let me tell you something. If you think that was good, if you think me being able to tell you about the fig tree was good, you ain't seen nothing yet. You are going to see things that you can't even imagine right now. So come on. Can anything good come from Nazareth? That, that question almost cost Nathaniel his place in history. Now, he decided that he was going to listen to Philip and see for himself, but, but what if he didn't do that? What if he said, uh, there's no way, right, this Nazareth thing, just that's, that's a, a deal breaker for me, right? What if he hadn't gone? 
What if he had followed his initial thought and just dismissed the idea that Jesus was the Messiah simply because he was from Nazareth? Now, um, I suppose he could have joined up later, right? He could have heard about the stories about things that Jesus had done and, and caught up to them and, and joined them later, but would he have been one of the twelve? Would, would we be using his name in worship today? Or would he be among the nameless people that followed Jesus at a district, distance that we just refer to as the crowds or other disciples? You see, it's more likely that would have happened, but even more likely than that is that he would have missed it. He would have missed all of it. He may have heard about the water being turned into wine, but he would not have seen it for himself. He may have heard about Jesus healing the blind, but he wouldn't have seen it. He may have heard about Jesus feeding the 5,000. He, he would have missed the, the silencing of a storm. He would have missed the teaching to the crowds. He would have missed the, the, the nights around the campfire where the real teaching, the deep teaching happened. The intimate conversations with Jesus it would have defined his life. He would have missed it all. That got me to thinking. Like, what, what's our Nazareth? Who is Nazareth for Newton? Is it Ella? <laughs> I didn't grow up here, I don't know. <laughs> Colfax? It's <laughs> understandable. Okay. Uh, no. Growing up in, in Carlisle, the, the closest thing that we had to a Nazareth was Pleasantville. <laughs> that was our rival in sports, and oh, we didn't like Pleasantville, right? But um, I gotta admit, it didn't really translate for me or for my peer group. It just didn't translate. It, I didn't know anyone from Pleasantville. We never went there. And, you know, they weren't very good, really. I mean, maybe they were good in the past, and there was a real reason for it to be a rivalry, rivalry but, but they weren't good now. And so it, it didn't really warrant the energy that it takes to, to dislike them or to hate them the way that um, the, you know, the legend wanted us to. I can remember, though, that when I told a friend that I met this girl at camp, I was talking about this girl that I met at camp. And when I said that she was from West Des Moines, the way he said, Valley Girl, caught <laughs> <laughs> me by surprise. <laughs> she wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Wendy, did you know that she generated that kind of response? Yes, and we liked it. Yeah, you liked it. <laughs> Shirts are made about that, actually. Um... What is our Nazareth? It's probably more appropriate to ask who are our Nazarenes. Right? Who are the people that we write on? Simply because of the way that we define them. Who do we prejudge? Who do we see as less than human? Maybe that's immigrants, people of color. LGBTQIA, the poor, the rich. Why, why do we do this? Why do we write people off? And, and what do we miss when we do this? I can tell you, I've been enriched by the people in my life who are different than me. I, I've had my understanding of a lot of things just expanded uh, when I take the time to sit and listen or to really try to experience uh, what other people might bring from other cultures. I've had my understanding of worship expanded by those who became a Christ follower in another country, in another culture. 
the way that those who are originally from Africa sing and dance and worship, that widens my understanding of participation. You know, they bring a joy to worship that's very different from what we from the American Midwest Protestant tradition think of as reverence. My understanding of who loves God and who God loves has been expanded by conversations with those who are different than me. And I wonder, how narrow would my view of God be if I wrote them off as unworthy or outside of God's love? What would I have missed? And so do we have anything to learn from Nathaniel? who decided to take a risk and to go and learn from those who were not like him? Do we have anything to learn from those who are not like us? Maybe those who are old and out of touch. Or those who are young and immature. Or do we have anything to learn from those who live month to month or week to week? Do we have anything to learn from people who practice other faiths? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Do we have anything to learn from those who claim red over blue or blue over red? Can anything good come from those people? Can anything good come from that? Now the obvious answer is yes, right? But knowing that, that Jesus is in the other as much as Jesus is in me, that's easy as a concept. Like, I can, I can say that, and I can even mean it, but when it comes to living that out, it's much harder. It, it takes work, and, and, and often more work than we're willing to give it. It, it means that, that we have to listen to ideas that are different than ours, and we may even have to question our own beliefs. That's not so easy. Just think about how hard it is for us to grasp the fear that black people expressed in the wake of George Floyd or Breonna Taylor or Jacob Blake. It's easy to call that an overreaction when we haven't lived their experience. Can anything good come from the Black Lives Matter movement? Mm -hmm. You know, Nathaniel was called to follow Jesus. And to do that, he had to set aside his gut reaction to dismiss everyone from Nazareth. He almost missed it. We are called to follow Jesus. And to do that, we have to set aside our gut reactions to, to those that are different from us. If we don't, then, then we're going to miss the gifts that God wants to give us through the diversity of God's God's glorious creative work. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Well, you know, since we're someone's Nazareth, then yeah. Yeah, I can. Would you pray with me? God, it's, it's really hard for us sometimes to look at other people and see anything other than the Nazareth that we have placed on them. And yet we are from someone's Nazareth. And uh, Lord, you call us to, to look deeper and to see you in them. To learn something from them to widen our understanding of you and your creation and your love to, to, to become something bigger than who we are now. Help us to set aside those differences enough so that we can embrace them. So we can learn how those differences might actually make us better. to do that even this week. In your name we pray. Amen.
normally in this time after the sermon, we would be um, taking the offering. And, and since we aren't passing plates right now, um, I would just ask you to take this moment to reflect on uh, what, is, what God is saying to you in this moment and uh, to think about the ways in which God is calling you uh, to commit. Still 
starting these new procedures. <laughs> Not used to doing that part. Right. It's a new thing, right? <coughs> Two prayers to lift up this morning uh, on the cards. And one is actually from a while ago, um, from 1128. I'm going to raise it anyway, um, even though it's been a while. But this is uh, from Jenna McIntyre, and her prayer request is for Annie Basso, who's um, suffering from breast cancer. Lord, in your mercy. From today, uh, from Mary. Um, my sister Elaine has breast cancer and is going for surgery February 2nd with radiation. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayers. Lord, um, we know that not everybody who has a prayer request shared it by the paper today. And so, Lord, we know that you can listen to their hearts. You know the prayers that are on our minds, on our hearts this morning. We give those to you. We ask you to, to cover each of them with your mercy and your grace and your healing power. We ask you to put a blanket of healing over our nation today. That you help us to come back to the, the idea of an America where we work together and help each other and hear differing ideas to do so with the love that you give to us. Help us to end that sort of division. But mostly, Lord, may, may you and your commands, your ideas for the way we should live together reign. May your kingdom come as we pray, when we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, as far as I can tell, the song that we're going to do for our sending forth today is a new one for any of you. At least they haven't done it for a very long time. I have a hymnal in my office that um, kind of talks about when the hymns were used, and this one was like in the early 2000s, so it's been a very long time. But uh, this chorus, which is unfortunately on page 666, <laughs> is actually a call for peace. And it's the, it's the song that uh, Wendy's Church in West Des Moines uh, used to send uh, folks forth every week um, when she was growing up. And so I offer it to you now as a way for us to, to try to bring that peace to the world. And so this is a shalom to you. Uh, I'm gonna, we're going to do it twice, and if you don't know it, listen the first time and then join in the second.
may we expand who we are by listening and learning and loving them. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah.